Um, I thought maybe um, we'd start uh, by introducing somebody who um, participated in the Genius Olympiad, because if uh, we don't call on you first and you listen to us and pronounce things wrong, that's going to hurt our uh, <laughs> rep reputation. But Jamie Kramer um, was the first place of uh, Women in Medicine and Health, the Westchester Science and Engineering Fair, Genius Olympiad Participant International Science Fair at SUNY Oswego, uh, researched health of the brain, and um, I thought maybe you could just come up here. I have a certificate of appreciation. <laughs> and maybe you could tell us a little bit about your project. And also, if you could stand over the value project, and also if you could um, um, tell us, uh, give us some advice on how we can make smarter decisions. <laughs> right by the podium. Right to the podium. Yep. Should I plug like my flash drive in? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> And while you're doing it, I should mention that Mark Zuckerberg uh, grew up in Dobbs Ferry, mm -hmm. so you may be the second famous person in Dobbs Ferry. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, Thank you. Do you need to qualify that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just people in Dobbs Ferry. <laughs> Okay, um, so my name is Jamie Kramer, and for my science research project, I focused on, it's kind of a complicated title, but the role of the NMDA receptor in post-ischemic stroke treatment. Um, so strokes are important to research because in 2015, they accounted for 6.34 million deaths, making it the second leading cause of death worldwide, um, accounting for 11% of the total deaths that occurred overall, um, and they've consistently been a leading cause of death for the past 15 years, um, indicating one, research, one reason why I wanted to research them. Um, the most common type of stroke is ischemic stroke, and this occurs when a blood clot prevents blood and oxygen from reaching the brain, which leads to delayed neuronal death. Um, this is caused by ischemic stroke, and it occurs 24 hours after the initial stroke. Um, it causes memory function, impaired bodily function, and also brain damage. And excitotoxicity is the kind of complicated sciencey thing that causes delayed neuronal death. Um, kind of a brief overview of excitotoxicity, just so you can understand this project. Um, it's caused by the stroke, which is a decrease in oxygen and glucose in the brain, um, which then leads to glutamate, a neurotransmitter that's released from one neuron and binds onto a specific receptor, the NMDA receptor, on the postsynaptic neuron. And basically, this whole interaction leads to degradation of the cell membrane, um, basically cell death. So the NMDA receptor is a specific um, portion of the brain that I kind of focused on. Um, it's primarily located in neurons, and it plays an important role in memory and the ability of neurons to communicate. Um, and it's broken down into two main subunits, the NR1 and NR2, and then further broken down into the NR2A and NR2B subunit. Um, and basically these are important because uh, this previous research hypothesized that the NR2B subunit may be able to prevent neuronal death um, after stroke. So this is where um, drugs come in. So Rho25 is a drug that binds to the NMDA receptor and blocks the function of the NR2B subunit, which allows us to determine the role of the subunit in different settings. Um, and the hippocampus is the primary area of the brain that I focused on. So it plays an important role in controlling memory function and spatial navigation, and it's also particularly susceptible to excitotoxicity, which again is cell death. So um, I looked at, so NRXA is a really complicated way of saying this, but basically it binds to the NMDA receptor and elicits a response. And then through this interaction, it has been able to decrease neuropathic pain that's associated with diabetes. So the drug that I looked at was NRXB, which is the subsequent drug in this family of drugs, and it functions similarly to NRXA, um, which led me to determine the problem statement 
So I basically wanted to figure out whether NRXB through interactions with the NMDA receptor could lead to decreased cell death. Um, this was the overarching goal. Goal A was to determine whether and at what concentration NRXB is able to decrease cell death after stroke. Um, and I hypothesized that it will be most effective at a moderate concentration. And then I also wanted to determine um, how the drug worked, so whether the NR2B study unit that I mentioned earlier is essential for the drug to be um, neuroprotective, and I hypothesized that it is. So in order to test these goals, um, we used a rat slice culture model. So the hippocampus of the rats were dissected, and then um, oxygen glucose deprivation was used to simulate ischemic stroke. So basically the slice cultures were transferred into media without glucose, and then placed into our epoxy box for 90 minutes to mimic ischemic stroke. Um, after ischemic stroke was simulated, we applied drugs. So uh, row 25, as I mentioned before, blocks the function of the NR2B subunit, allowing us to determine its role. And then NRXB is the drug that we're hoping will decrease delayed neuronal death. Um, we wanted to dilute it into three different concentrations to determine at which concentration it was most effective. Um, and then in order to apply the drugs, we added it to the um, met media and then placed the slices on top so the drug co combination could kind of osmose through. Um, this is kind of a sample experimental setup so that you can visualize it. Um, basically, uh, there are approximately two to three different um, cell, different variables um, per uh, cell or per well. Um, so this is kind of the list of variables. We had a control one with no um, stroke, a control stroke, and then we tested the three different concentrations of NRXB. We also tested row 25, to, again, to determine the role of the subunit, and then we combined them to determine the role together. In order to collect data, um, we added propidium iodide, which is commonly used to stain cells, and is only able to go into cells that have decaying cell membranes, which indicate cell death. And then in order to anal analyze the images, we analyzed for brightness or intensity. And basically, the higher the intensity, the more amount of cell death that occurred. So in terms of results, um, as you can see illustrated in the red box, um, this is the drug that we tested. So across all three combinations, NRXB was most neuroprotective at a moderate concentration. Um, these images illustrate the brain slice cultures. So from left to right, there's an increase in, there's an increase in concentration of the drug used. However, you can visually see that the image in the center has the least amount of brightness and the least amount of cell death, indicating that NRXB is most neuroprotective at a moderate concentration of one microliter. Um, and then we combined, compared the control versus the 90-minute OGD versus the drug that we used, NRXB. And across all three regions, um, there was the least amount of cell death present in the slice that had gotten the drug. Um, and there was a 75% decrease in cell death um, between the 90-minute OGD, so the stroke, and then the drug combination. Um, this can be seen, so basically, our drug was able to decrease cell death from a value located in the middle image to on the right, so that illustrates kind of a significant decrease in cell death, um, which is kind of what you want after stroke. Um, and then we also, in order to determine how the drug works, this goes back to the NR2B subunit, so we compared the, um, on the left, in the blue box, in the purple box is the drug, and then in the pink box is solely row 25, so the one drug that blocks the function of the NR2B subunit, and there was a 330% increase in cell death, and then compared from solely NRXB to the combination of NRXB and row 25, there was a 160% increase in cell death. So basically, as you apply row 25, cell death increases, indicating that the NR2B subunit is necessary in order for NRXB to be neuroprotective. Um, this can be seen visually. So on the left, we have solely NRXB, and on the right, we have the addition of row 25. So you can visually see the increase in cell death that occurs. And then basically, overall, this is important because um, we can understand kind of how NRXB works and why it's able to decrease cell death after stroke. Um, this can be used to increase and the, improve the quality of life of stroke victims by decreasing the amount of brain damage they sustain. Um, and in the future, we can run more experiments to figure out more, um, underst like understand more of how um, NRXB works. Um, so that's something that I'm working on this summer. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. Great. So, so what, what, <laughs> at what age can we hire you to be our doctor? <laughs> as soon as Fantastic. possible. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. So, much easier.
One more payment, we can say we knew her. We knew her one. Is, uh, I'd like to uh, propose a town law that anyone who wins a Nobel Prize uh, and who speaks at a town board meeting has to invite all the town board members. <laughs> From the, the tech, you have to get, I don't have the remote. Yeah, he's saying that you have. Um, also, you can reach out there, you can press the button. I don't know. And you've had some other uh, student let me, let me say who that. also competed? We've had um, tremendous, I mean, Jamie is obviously a superstar, but we've had some tremendous um, success. I don't, I don't have the remote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.